top story tanzania's main opposition chadema is calling for the immediate and unconditional release of its leaders and young supporters it comes after the party accused police of arresting chadema's former presidential candidate tundulisu party chairman freeman mboe john mianka and secretary general and more than 400 youth members over the weekend lisu and other party leaders had planned to address a conference today to mark international youth day for more reaction to the arrests voa's peter cloti reached john merama chedema's director of protocol communications and foreign affairs up to this moment police have arrested 443 people from different parts of the country. Most of them were the youths who were on their way to go to the the Youth International Day celebrations in Mbea. And yesterday evening, the police arrested our former presidential candidate and the part vice chairman, Tundu Lisu, our secretary general, uh, John Mnika, was also arrested by the police. And up to this moment, we don't know where are they because the police, they are not saying about them. We've sent our lawyers in Mbea. They've been in several different police stations, but the police, they are denying that they are not in their custody. So we don't know who, where are they. But, 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 but is it true that police officers who arrested them? It is true. They were arrested by the police under the supervision of the regional police commander of Mbea region with the regional crime officer of the region where... They, because they were arrested inside our office. But if the police are denying that they arrested them, then things don't add up. And that's, that's why we are, we are calling them to, 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 to release them or brought them to the court of law if, anyway, they did anything wrong. This morning, because of that situation, the chairman of the party, Honorable Freeman Boy, decided to take a flight to Mbea so that he can go and talk to the police and ask them to show him where are they, and specifically on Robert Tundulisu, because Tundulisu is always in medication. His assistants, yesterday they are saying that he didn't get his medication, and when Mr. Mboe reached Mbea Songwe Airport, the police also arrested him inside the VIP lounge at the airport in Mbea. So as we speak now, also the chairman of the Mboe Boy is under the custody of police. But, but John Rema, the police are saying that the Youth Day that you said is being organized by the party to celebrate the International Youth Day is just a pretext for your party to cause confusion, to misinform the Tanzanian youth to cause problems in the country. That is their narrative. And it is not true at all because uh, how can we organize such a thing uh, within the institution. Last year, we did organize the same, and we did, they did celebrate in Mwanza region. The previous year, we did the same. The ruling party, they are now showing their true colors. They are coming out to, to try to bring us back to the times of Magufuli, when the police were arresting our leaders everywhere in the country. This is what we are seeing right now. Does that mean that because of the arrest, your celebrations and plans for the celebrations will not proceed as planned? Up to this moment, I don't think it it can proceed because the police, they didn't even uh, arrest only the leaders of the youth and the people. They even uh, confiscated our equipment, stage, even the tents were confiscated by the police yesterday. So at the the, the grounds where we, we planned to organize such a big rally, huge rally, it is under this, the, the control of police as we speak, and they are not allowing anybody to get across it. So we don't think we can proceed with it because it has been disrupted. Vice President Jessica Rupo found herself at the center of an online controversy after her social media team mistakenly posted outdated photos from a previous inauguration while congratulating Rwandan President Paul Kagame on his recent swearing-in ceremony. 
This occurred on the social media platform X quickly drew the attention of users who were quick to point out the error. Upon returning from Kigali, where she had represented President Yoburi Museveni at President Kagame's inauguration for his fourth term, Arupa posted a message on X expressing her congratulations to Kagame and wishing the people of Rwanda peace and prosperity. However, the post was accompanied by photos from Kagame's 2017 inauguration, which featured former Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir, who was ousted from power in 2019, was notably absent from the recent ceremony. The mistake did not go unnoticed, and social media users were quick to call out the error. One user, Calvin Mutinzi, responded, Her Excellency at Jessica Rupu. The photos you shared from yesterday's inauguration mistakenly include former Sudan President Omar al Bashir, who wasn't present. This has occurred some confusion, caused some confusion. Please update with the correct images to ensure accurate information is shared. Thank you. In the response to the criticism, Arupo's social media team promptly deleted the post. However, the damage and or had already been done, with several users commenting on the post. The incident prompted calls from some quarters for the vice president to take stronger action against her social media team. Several commentators suggested that those responsible for the error should be held accountable, with some even calling for them to be dismissed. In the wake of the backlash, the vice president's press secretary, Pamela Ankunda, issued a public apology. She said, I have received so many calls and messages regarding the mistakes on Vice President X handle. I thank everyone who is hard the presence of mind to reach out. While there is no excuse for such mediocrity, I deeply apologize on behalf of the press team. The handler stands, questioned, and will do better, said Anghunda. The vice president's return to Uganda was marked by her official duties in Kigali, where she represented President Museveni in, in the inauguration ceremony. Arupo had arrived in Kigali on Saturday, August 10th, and was officially received at the Katuna border by the Rwandan Minister of Environment and Ugandan Ambassador to Rwanda. In an area post, she had congratulated the people of Rwanda for conducting a peaceful presidential election. President Kagame's inauguration held at the packed 45,000-seat Amahoro Stadium in Kigali was attended by several dozen heads of state and 